Hello YouTube, this is Morgan, Airspeed Prime here with my next Avatar news update video. So I've got a few things to cover uh, from the last couple of days. Nothing huge, but uh, just to catch up with everything. So I think I only covered this on the podcast and I haven't actually done it in a video. So we knew there was going to be an exclusive version of the Yang Chen book and uh, it did actually go up. So it's a Barnes & Noble exclusive again. Uh, and as you can see here, exclusive edition, Barnes & Noble. In the description, it says that this edition features ad eight additional pages featuring original character art and a cut scene with author commentary. So, as you'd expect, like the previous ones, art with uh, original character art. So, I guess another Yang Chen, maybe who these characters are. Maybe Kavik will uh, get uh, a piece of art about what he looks like. We'll have to wait and see. But there also has to be enough uh, page count for the a full uh, cut scene with author commentary. So it's not a cut chapter, it's a cut scene. So uh, I doubt this will be uh, as substantial as the cut chapter that was in the uh, you know collection of the Kyoshi books. But something like that's actually quite interesting, but it's probably going to be way less text here. So that seems interesting enough. Um, obviously, it's a bit frustrating that obviously the exclusive edition is basically only available in Barnes & Noble. So obviously there's none of them here in Ireland. So I'd have to go jump through a few hoops to, to get it if I wanted to. I might go ahead and do that just to have it. But, uh, you know, a bit awkward. But just to be aware, if you want the exclusive edition, Barnes & Nobles is where you want to go. Similarly, uh, listings have gone up for the audio CD version of The Dawn of Yang Chen. Uh, and the only reason I mention this is just because the audio CDs for the, the Kyoshi books, especially now, are relatively difficult to get. You can get the audiobook, but if you want the sort of physical edition, it is quite difficult to get. I have the um, Kyoshi, the, the first book, The Rise of Kyoshi audiobook CD. I did a video on this when I got it. Uh, but I, I actually haven't been able to get the Shadow of Kyoshi one. Now, this one, I think, just was slightly more available than the other one. But it was weird because they ended up coming out at a very similar time. But, you know, it's a, it's, so that means it's kind of like a rare kind of piece of merchandise. So if you are super interested in the novels and want to get everything and like the audiobooks, um, this is probably the way to go with it. So Amazon do have a pre-order up for it, so just be aware of that. Um... I don't believe they've announced the narrator of this yet. It's probably still a little early, but it is scheduled for the same day as uh, the book release. So just be aware of that. Um, next, this is the Diamond Select Toys blog. They, they've been asked another Avatar question. Are there any plans for more Avatar The Last Airbender dioramas? The answer, yes, we have several more Avatar Gallery dioramas in the works. Now. They asked, this question has been asked before, a bunch of months ago, they were asked about this, we know there are more coming, and this is just a more up-to-date version of that, because this is from March 28th, so, you know, just over a week ago, um, we got this answer, so they're still coming, and you'll note that the last time we talked about a DST um, question, it was mainly talking about the fact that actually the figures for Diamond Select might actually be a little bit up in the air. They seem to have maybe gone against plans that they had to continue past, like, what is it, Wave 5, I think, um, which was interesting. But it seems like they are going well ahead with the dioramas, several more in the works. Now, if you'll remember the way that the first kind of group of three happened, they ultimately got announced pretty much back to back. There was obviously a bit of a gap between them, but not massively, given that, like, it's been quite a big gap between... Uh, the Zuko figure, which was the last one, and us still not knowing what's next. So I'm guessing there's probably at least three more coming out. Toph feels like the obvious next one to do Earth. Sokka feels like the obvious first non-bender to do. And then the sixth one, if it is indeed three, um, obviously will be a little bit of a toss-up between do you finish Team Avatar and do Suki, or do you go for one of the other notable Bender characters, like, say, Iroh, Azula, maybe even Ozai, to have the sort of main villain? Uh, I'd be surprised if they went for anyone except that. Maybe an Avatar, maybe Kyoshi, playing off the, that popularity. But uh, I think people would like to see a Suki statue, and I would too, just to have the full team Avatar in this really cool uh, style. 
So uh, just for anyone wondering about that, because I had had a few questions of like, when's the fourth one coming? Because people are really into them. That's the situation there. Uh, next, a bit of a random one here, but um, yeah, uh, Avatar Fisher Price Little People Collector Set. Um, this was a bit of a random one, just kind of coming out of nowhere. It's obviously Mattel kind of uh, brand, ultimately, I guess. And uh, yeah, it's Aang, Sokka, Katara, and Toph in a collector set. And you can see here, it's even got collector packaging. Like it says here, display worthy package with a soft flocked oppa. So even though, you know, it's a uh, Fisher Price thing, so it's more for like very young kids, they've done it with sort of collector packaging so that you can buy it and just display it in, in packaging, which I think is kind of nice if this is of interest to anyone. Um, I I personally want to wait and see if they're planning to do more Avatar in this style before I kind of went ahead and kind of did anything with it. But it's just a nice little thing for anyone who is actually interested in it. Uh, they just seem to be basic little figures. And I guess this is a line that Fisher Price now does in general, rather than it being specific for Avatar. But, you know, it's there if you are interested. Uh, last bit of news is this, uh, exclusive piece of news, uh, Netflix Avatar The Last Airbender casting call goes out for Avatar Karuk. So they seem to get this information that uh, this is the breakdown of the role, they obviously use fake names. Character is male, 30s to 40s of indig indigenous descent, a legendary warrior from the past, he appears as a spirit to deliver a warning to the tribe about the consequences of losing the coming battle. He has a soulful and mel melancholy demeanour. The result of losing the love of his life during the past war. Recurring guest performer estimated two episodes. So we all obviously know there's only like eight episodes in the full season. Uh, they're, I guess, building up now to casting for the final arc, which is going to be the uh, Nor Northern Water Tribe arc at the end. And this seems to suggest that they are moving up the appearance of Avatar Karuk from basically Escape from the Spirit World Karuk into the actual finale. Now this makes sense, I think this is a perfectly fine change that this show can do because it has the benefit of Avatar having told its story, it can now use all the material that there is for Karuk in whatever way they want. So uh, Escape from the Spirit World Karuk is actually really good and was what we mainly knew stuff about Karuk from, uh, obviously outside of Sozin's Comet. Um, but it is a webcomic that a lot of fans still ultimately don't really know much uh, know about uh, and um, it, it has that weird dynamic of Aang doesn't remember what happened during it so there's like, some weirdness there so them actually bringing this in where you know <laughs> you know Kuro gets alluded to in the the book one finale makes a lot of sense to me now it is interesting that he appears as a spirit to deliver the warning to the tribe about the consequences of losing the final battle. So it seems like his role is going to be more than just the, like, Ko the face dealer stuff. I'm assuming they'll still make that reference, just because I, I'm guessing they're really treating the past avatars as notable characters here and really playing on that dynamic. So they'll use him a little bit more in that... I guess this means there'll be a bit of Karuk in probably part one and part two of the finale. It's maybe looking like the last two episodes are going to be the uh, the Water Tribe arc. We'll we'll see what they do there. Um, the the idea of like Ro uh, sorry, sorry Karuk just like sort of maybe appearing through Ang to warn the entire Northern Water Tribe is quite interesting because it would it would obviously give us like the how the Northern Water Tribe res respect a previous avatar who's from the North. Um, and maybe they have a slightly different dynamic with the Northern Water Tribe in terms of like, maybe they're not, they're just expecting that the walls, the ice walls will hold and that there's not a lot to happen. And Karuk's appearance is what really uh, gets them going for the fight, something like that. But they're, they're already referencing the whole Umi stuff. Um, a past war, again, it's probably just to not make it so specific as to immediately out the fact that it's uh, Karuk um, in that. Like, if they mention Ko the Face Stealer, um, it would be so obvious what it is. It still feels pretty obvious, because I don't think there's any anything else it could be, necessarily. But, um, 
Yeah, this on top of the fact that they obviously cast have cast a Kyoshi, and again, Kyoshi doesn't really have anything in book one necessarily. I think it highlights that what they're probably doing here is bringing up some of these, I suppose, bigger characters, probably at the expense of maybe certain other minor characters who appear over the course of the season. I think I've gone through it in previous videos, you know, all the different characters, but uh, I ultimately can respect the decision to go for, here's a little bit more Kyoshi and Kurok up front uh, at the expense of maybe, you know, Bato not being involved, the mechanist maybe not being introduced here, uh, us maybe holding back on Boomy until next season, those type of things. Uh, I'm actually going to be relatively okay with that if that's indeed what they do. Now, ultimately, it still depends on how they execute on these scenes. Is the portrayal of Karuk uh, good? Will they utilize any of what we learned about him from, say, the novels? Or is it just going to be literally, you know, using the stuff from the finale, bring that up? Are they even going to acknowledge the stuff with him from Escape from the Spirit World? Um, I guess they have to, because it's directly there in the character description, but we'll see. So, um, yeah, the, it's still one of those things where, like, I'm not, like, wildly excited for the show. Um, but things seem like they're going all right in terms of production. A lot will depend on how the costuming looks, how the CG looks when they finally get around to showing any of that stuff to us. Um, but uh, given that the, the Halo show is currently ongoing and I'm watching that, and I definitely have some frustrations with the way they've chosen to do like their version of a live action Halo show, uh, it, it again makes me feel like, yeah, these sort of live action adaptations can be tricky to do. And so the the confidence level is sort of like, it wavers depending on what we hear and other stuff that happens. So I don't really know what to, to make of this show currently. But um, yeah, Karuk, I'm all for seeing uh, him used a little bit more. That seems good. So yeah, in the comments, let me know what your thoughts are. Uh, the the Yang Chen exclusive edition, the uh, audio CD now being available for pre-order. Uh, more dioramas on the way. What characters do you think they'll do? The random uh, Fisher Price uh, avatar figures as well. And then this news that um, Karuk is also uh, apparently being cast. There's also, I think, a news article from the same place saying that, yeah, it looks like they're casting for Arnook, Paku, and Yue as well. So that makes sense. They're really obvious. I don't think you can cut any of them necessarily. So. That was very obvious. But let me know uh, your thoughts on these news items in the comments below. But that has been it. Thanks for watching and bye.